And I will tell you something, a personal anecdote, Mr. Krishnamurti. I was so enamored by his argument when he used to say, which is more important, the state or the citizen's right? And his famous argument that used to go, so that inspired me to be, I used to always think I should be a lawyer because I must, cannot of course be like Palkiwala. But I must try to do something which Palkiwala has been doing and try to protect the common citizen's rights. I did law, but I also did my CA. And as you know, one could practice only on one side. So my father said, it's a good idea to be a lawyer, but also do a charter of which I did. And I implemented practice only a charter of and could practice as a lawyer. But that contribution is so great that he, want, he wanted to ensure that every citizen's right to property, right to freedom, has to be protected. And in fact, tomorrow we will be celebrating, or rather observing, a black chapter in India's democracy, the emergency. So I think it's more topical that we are discussing it today, wherein Palkiwala is to always so vehemently protect the human rights and the property. Talking about putting India on fast track, I think that's the most appropriate topic when we think about Ani Palkiwala and think about today's context. The days when we started deciding the course of action that we must have in the country, when we wanted to put India on a fast track at that time as well. The argument was very strong that we must put a state as a driving force of bringing economic transformation. There were people like Palkiwala, Minu Masani, Pilu Modi, Dal Gopalajari. All of these people were of a strong opinion that we must allow the entrepreneurship of the country to grow, state must play an enabling role, and entrepreneurs of India will develop India. Unfortunately, at that time, the argument that prevailed was that state must do everything. And that took us to a, another aberration, that state knows everything. Not only state can do everything, State knows everything, and therefore state will decide everything that is good for the citizens, and state will take on all the responsibilities, and never told the citizens what their duties were, because state thought we'll do everything. And that became a, some sort of a aberration in the course of India's economic development, and that course correction has to happen, and that's what we are trying to do now. But that was a major change that we took and in fact had Mr. Palkiwala's argument prevailed. I don't know how much India would have progressed, what change would have made at that particular time. I remember one of the very fine point he used to always make is that why should government do world development? It should be given to institutions like Ramakrishna Mission. Because they can, they have the Hard to do it, the government has the power to do it, but they have the heart to do it. And as it always happens, that you force something on a bureaucracy to do it, and you ask someone who is motivated to do it, who will do a better job. And that's what you should always say. But as we all go along, we need to get some of these great ideas of Mr. Palkiwala into reality, and that try to put it into reality. One of the great some of the critics of this school of thought that entrepreneurship can do everything, state should only be enabler, was that the poor will get very, very badly affected if state does not act for them. Now, there is enough empirical evidence available that those countries where state want to do everything, have they succeeded in removing poverty? 
other countries where we allowed the other pressure to come, has the poverty disappeared or not, is something which can really, is an empirical evidence I look at today. And therefore I think, in the interest of human poor, bringing market forces, allowing the state to be an enabler and ensure, of course, that the helping hand of state is always available for those who need the most, would have been the ideal combination of bringing state and entrepreneurship forces working together. In today's context, putting India first on track is something which is really necessary. Not because we want to compete with some of the other countries to say that they are growing at this rate and we are growing faster. This is ensuring that human dignity, if it has to be ensured, then there is inevitably economic progress has to happen. Unless there is an economic progress, there is enough resources available, we cannot deploy those resources where it will really help the most needy and the most vulnerable and the most poor population of the country. And to create those resources, we obviously need an economic policy. And an economic policy will allow the entrepreneurship which will create resources, which will create wealth that can be then put it into the right resources. And when you put it into the right resources, also that other argument, Mr. Palkiwal had one argument how to create resources and other how to deploy. That's what I was giving an example of Ramakrishna Mission type of institutions who can do even the deployment part better. So today, we must ensure that both the best of two models which will allow us to grow must be allowed to put into reality. One of that is the first one is entrepreneurship itself. I think there is undenying the fact that India growth story essentially is because of the entrepreneurship of India. If you can take only two countries and compare them with each other, one in China, which also grew faster than India, now almost 10 trillion dollar economy, five times of India's GDP, five times, six times of India's per capita income. All that happened because of huge investment by the state. And now they are probably worried by the fact that that has taken them this far but not beyond. Now they want to find out how we can bring in the concept of ensuring that a capital that has to be deployed, the ICOR that you call it, which the capital deployment happens in a more efficient manner, can happen with private participation, private sector participation. In India's growth story, in fact, it was the other way around. That while state tried to do so many things and in most of the things has not succeeded in realizing the objective, as we have seen the great old days of public sector fully commanding the heights, is now we need to revisit all that. Even Air India is a good example. Whether we should run the airline, which was once run by JRD Tata, and now we took over and then now we have created a problem 40,000 crores plus debt. India has grown at a much rapid rate thanks to the private sector entrepreneurs. Now if that has to grow faster, we need to do, remove all the hurdles that come in the way of the business and that's why ease of doing business and that's what Prime Minister Modi is trying to put that as a priority. How to ensure that all the hurdles, all the obstacles, they are there in the way of business should be removed and therefore ease of doing business will be one of the great software that are necessary for doing and growing entrepreneurship in India. So as I was saying, the very fine balance that has to be ensured is allow the private sector to grow, but state must play an enabling role. The enabling role will come in terms of removing the hurdle to making sure that entrepreneurship can be blossomed to its full potential and to do that, ease of doing business is something which must be taken care of. Startups is something which is really a key word now because if you want to really allow the entrepreneurship, where the entrepreneurship is born, it is born in the minds of the people. In fact, the best of entrepreneurs of today, they are into communication technology, information technology, into digital world. All of them are born into one of the smallest places that one can think of. Google, probably in the garage. Facebook in a dormitory of a college. All this explains that 
we don't need to invest huge amount of money into creating new businesses particularly now the new businesses that are growing but we need to invest into the entrepreneurs and allow them to take their idea to fruition and that would mean that we must encourage startups to happen and if we really allow the startups to take place and startups to grow then we need to create ecosystem for the startups the startups have grown maybe it was started in garat maybe it was started in dom but why it could grow is because the us had an ecosystem which could allow them to they are a venture capitalist they are angel investors they are people who can take it to the marketing level all that ecosystem existed there so for a startups to grow we need to develop that ecosystem and that's what we really need to put and we are trying to do that also the third element is job market in the world has changed dramatically there will be jobs available but not in the conventional sense of the term the jobs will be available no longer in the government as we used to have it just imagine there was a time when people used to feel that i must get job in the post office so many of them because post office were there all in all the villages not all but many villages post offices meant that the business will always grow people will keep sending letters to each other jobs in post offices are not growing anymore but the courier service is growing the jobs in the courier service are growing faster so just imagine the change in the job profile the government providing job into the same service that is now provided by the courier they are growing but post office jobs are not growing take example of another people wanted to be an aerostat or a person or a pilot only option available was air india or that time indian airlines and air india both of them so jobs in indian airlines and air india now merge of course may not be available but jobs in airline sector are available plenty there will be jobs in jet airways in so many other airlines that are there jobs in police because security becoming so important may not be as growing as they should grow in the early 60s and 70s but that doesn't mean that the jobs in security guard business is not growing they are growing faster jobs in doordarshan that is the only channel that the government used to have and the only channel allowed to work in india may not be having but jobs in media business jobs in entertainment business are growing so that means the creation of job has to has happened but has happened in a different way what does it mean it means a profile of new opportunities in the job market is changing rapidly it is no longer the old jobs that were created and ensured and they were created in a way because of the state intervention are maybe declining but jobs in a deregulated manner are growing even faster but more importantly we'll see over a period of time that job profile is going to undergo sea change and this has happened in many other countries as well if you remember in the us the blue collar job has almost declined over a period of time in fact that's one of the reason what people were trying to support president trump because he said i am going to provide a job because we have lost jobs to countries like china india and others we i'll get those jobs back into us but what happened in those three decades when the us was losing those jobs rapidly the manufacturing jobs went away the big mighty steel sector of us almost dismantled or not we came we came down but in the same time the jobs in the services sector but the jobs of course people used to call mac jobs the jobs in the mac mcdonalds the jobs which will be paid by hourly work that you will do but those jobs i think what happened in the us what happened in other countries is inevitably showing us some sort of a glimpse into what's going to happen in the future the job profile is going to change india has to change according to that and what do we need to do we need to ensure that each and every person in the country will be able to now do a job of his choice something that he is good at something which has aptitude to do it in something in which 
He can also contribute by contributing his ideas and mind and everything in his individual capacity and be part of an ecosystem that is likely to develop. Earlier, the system was that I set up a big business, I allocated a job, I create a job and then I try to fill the vacancy. But just imagine a new scenario that is emerging in which you create an opportunity because you identify an opportunity that is existing because of the new economy that is growing and then you fill up that void by creating an economic model. This is something for which we need to develop a new system. We need to have a skill in development, developing each and every individual to realize that potential that he has in him. And I will tell you this is available across the country. I am just saying this interestingly because yesterday I was in Konkan. I just landed in Mumbai at about 1 o'clock and took a morning flight. Unfortunately, delayed, so I first apologize to you for being late here. But I was, it was just beyond my control, the flight got delayed. But yesterday, we had a very interesting program. We run an NGO called Mano Sadhan Vikas Samsa. We started more than two decades ago, realizing this is what is going to happen in the country. The job profiles are going to change. And we started identifying the completely rural area. We, women are more than men, not because more women were born there than men, because men migrated. They left behind their daughters, their wives, their mothers, and they migrated in search of jobs. So we decided that if women must get supplementary income, we identified, did an aptitude test for them, and we have succeeded in telling more than one lakh women and others. And in the process, at least 40, 50 percent of them have now become self-employed on their own in a rural area. Something which they are not earning some fancy amount of money. They are earning, our target was something between 1,000 to 5,000 rupees a month. A supplementary income for a woman who can do it sitting in her own place. Because rural areas, it is very difficult for a woman to leave place and find a job somewhere else. And to do that, you, there is in many houses, even in my, that's the Konkan is my old constituency, same area, where there are not even a system of locking the houses. Because how can a woman leave the house and go somewhere else? So we decided to develop this model. I am saying this, is this putting India on fast track. The idea should be, each and every person of India should be gainfully employed. I will give an example. And this is something very interesting. There is a lady whose name was Smita, uh, not Purushottam, uh, I'll just tell her, 